Hello, welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss real, metaphysical, and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible results in your life. This week, we're going to be discussing Leviathan, so stay tuned. This week I want to talk about an entity I have been getting a lot of questions about over the last few months, both in the live streams, in email, on Discord, um, the Patreon, everywhere. Um, and that is Leviathan. And I totally get it and I totally understand why this entity is so popular and so many people are so curious about it. First off, as we know from other videos on this channel, dragons are immensely, immensely popular. Not only in mythical culture, but in pop culture. They are everywhere. So anytime an entity um, is associated with that mythology, it's just something that humanity seems to gravitate toward very, very easily. So with that said, I also get the question, is Leviathan a demon or is Leviathan a dragon? And again, I have to say, we use the word demon as if we like we would use the word human. Um, that's not the case, actually. Um, the word demon originated from the term daemon, um, and it had a completely different meaning. And that's something we'll probably go into in another video. Now, different religions, different belief systems have taken any entity they view as harmful, chaotic, or evil, and they've just lumped it into this mass um, mod podge of what they call demons. In fact, most of the demons and even the goetic spirits were worshipped as gods before Christianity. Simple as that. So why did they go from being deities to suddenly demons? Honestly, they're publicists. Um, so that word is drastically misused. And the simple fact is there are a lot of demons that are true dragons um, because of that. So Leviathan is definitely one of these. Um, I myself have been fascinated with Leviathan since childhood. Many of you who watch this channel know I grew up in the church. So reading stories um, from the Bible was something my grandfather always done. Um, and even though back then I really couldn't make sense of it, didn't sound like a you know, friendly entity, certainly not a puppy or something. But even as a kid, this entity fascinated me, absolutely. Um, in fact, um, one of the first movies that I ever watched that got me fascinated in science, marine biology specifically, was the movie Jaws. I remember seeing that um, on TV um, with my dad when I was really, really young. Of course, once he realized I was watching it, he hurried me out of the room. Um, but I was asking myself, why would this thing do this? And I remember being fascinated by the shark itself um, and it just had this certain terrifying beauty to it. And it did, that movie did bring to mind memories and, of my grandfather reading stories about Leviathan. So, in a lot of ways, you know, there is that overlap there. I'm not saying Leviathan was a shark, nor was he the inspiration for Jaws. But, it is something that has played a part in my life for a very long time. Now... I'll be honest, Leviathan is an entity I work with a lot in dragon magic. Um, and I primarily work with Leviathan from a draconic standpoint. I do work with him as a dragon. Um, but that's not to say for those people out there who work with Leviathan from the demonic perspective that that is inaccurate. Because again, regardless of how you're approaching the entity, it doesn't change the fact that the entity is the entity. So, the answer, the simple answer to is Leviathan a demon or is Leviathan a dragon, the answer is yes to both because the way we are now using the word demon. Um, and that is something I really am wanting to do a video on in the future. But needless to say, we're just, for simplicity, remember, we are throwing anything, any entity type 
um, that is disliked by another system or belief into that bucket of demons. Um, while everything else that's divine and good, we lump over here. And that's, that's not doing justice for anything in magic and practice. Um, if anything, it's confusing a lot of people. So, let's get into this a little deeper then. Who is Leviathan? Well, most people will know Leviathan as a serpent-like dragon that lives in the oceans and is talked about in the book of Job and a few other places. And there is plenty of lore scattered around, some of it contradictory. But we see this in myths and legends a lot. Um, now, quickly, appearance-wise, um, of Leviathan is often viewed as an androgynous entity that takes the form of a massive serpent-style dragon covered in heavy scales. Its eyes and scales shine bright with light and heat and fire from its mouth. Um, this is a pretty normal and common description of Leviathan. Um, it is very well known for the heat, the light, that bright fire, that burning sensation from the eyes and the mouth. Um, even its scales itself seem to shine with this unworldly um, heat that produces a light. And this makes sense when you look at Leviathan in Dragon Magic and you learn about Leviathan. Leviathan is what is referred to as a cross-elemental dragon not just a singular specific elemental dragon. So the elements that Leviathan is associated with in dragon magic are earth, water, fire, and chaos. Now the chaos one is the big one that scares a lot of practitioners away because we do know in dragon magic how dangerous and destructive chaos can be. But this is one of the reasons Leviathan is such an amazing entity to work with. Because of those first three elements, all three of those first three elements that you see in Leviathan are a part of the lower element tier, the beginning tier. And you can approach Leviathan and work only within those tiers. Now that doesn't mean a little bit of that chaos ain't going to bleed in. This is an entity of change. This is a massive entity of change and growth. It's going to cause a lot of movements. It's going to cause disturbances. It's going to remove blockages from your life. It's going to open pathways. And it will do so in a big way. But since it does have those three areas that are in the lower elements, it is a very, very approachable entity for a practitioner. Should it be the first dragon you ever approach? That would be questioned. There's a lot of practitioners who would question that. But Leviathan is an approachable one if you are ready for change. If you don't want change, don't approach this dragon. That would be my one caveat. If you don't want change, if you want everything to stay as it is, don't approach this dragon. This isn't an entity you would approach just to bring something to you. Because that's not necessarily change, that's just adding something. And it's, a, it's such a minor change, it's not the type of change we're talking about. When this dragon moves, there's going to be big change. Um, what you know is your daily routine and your daily life will change in some way. But that's a good thing. Now, as we know, many dragons have a human form. In human form, Leviathan is often seen with dark hair um, and deep gray-black eyes as if staring into the abyss, abyssal waters of your very soul. Um, is actually how I've heard many magicians describe it. And I'm glad they did because that is a perfect description of the eyes that you see in Leviathan. Now you'll notice here, I didn't say male or female. Again, Leviathan has a very androgynous um, form. Now there are times a Leviathan will appear male very drastically and very female. That's fine. Most of the time though, it's very androgynous. Um, and I believe this actually ties into the lore as well. In many of the writings, there's listed two Leviathans, a male and a female. One is separated from the other, and another Leviathan's refer, uh, referred to as he. Um, in other accounts, Leviathan's directly referred to as she. So the fact that dragons are largely androgynous and don't really have a set sexuality, and they can change it at any time, even if they have a day-to-day -day preference, um, nothing's locked in for them. 
Again, that does make a lot of sense when speaking about Leviathan because Leviathan is a dragon. Um, now, I've seen a lot of practitioners getting fights over is Leviathan male or female. I'll be honest, I don't understand those arguments. Um, if you're working with an entity and it chooses to appear to you one way or the other, go with it. Um, like all Gnosis, Gnosis is going to change from person to person. There is no one true Gnosis. There's things that we can line up from multiple magicians to kind of get a broader view and understanding of a larger truth that is trickling out through multiple venues of Gnosis. But if your workings are working for you and they are manifesting the changes you're wanting, go with it, okay? So with that said though, we always like to include a few things in here about the entities that on a large scale prove to be true. So the direction that most people do associate with Leviathan is west. And that makes sense because most people associate Leviathan very heavily with water and west is the direction of the elemental water. The colors that are associated with Leviathan are blue, red, brown, and gray. Um, to some people, some of these colors don't make sense. Most people only want to associate blue because of that water element or red because some people do actually see that fire element in Leviathan. But the brown and gray, a lot of people don't really understand. Um, brown, honestly, that earth element is there. It's very strong. Um, so naturally that would be there. The gray is kind of that easy side of the chaos. It's not one of his major points. Um, though he does have that chaos element in him, it is not the largest portion of him. And so it's more of a gray than a black. The season um, that is associated with Leviathan for a lot of practitioners who work with Leviathan and associate different entities with seasons is autumn. This is a particular one I don't actually use. I don't really work with the seasons in dragon magic so much, but that, but that's okay. And naturally, the month they associate with um, Leviathan is September, which honestly, that's my favorite fall month. So yay, let's go with that. Um, and of course, the element. Um, here we have the element, the main element listed as water. And that is true. Most people in most practices will associate Leviathan with water. Some even refer to it as a primal water elemental. And I can understand that as well. I mean, even dragons themselves are referred to as primal elemental beings, though they're not elementals. Um, so, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But again, at least in dragon magic, at least in dragon magic, let's make that caveat, Leviathan is viewed as a cross-elemental dragon who works in water, earth, fire, and chaos, okay? All right, that leads us to what areas can Leviathan help in? Now, this one is a long list of areas that Leviathan can help in, and he is a very, very helpful one here. He can help with magic dealing with nature, knowledge, secrets, sorcery, emotions, initiations, workings dealing with the equinox, particularly the fall equinox, healing, and fertility. So you do see all these little things playing out here. Now do remember, sometimes healing can have a destructive effect, or sometimes something has to be removed, something needs to be torn away. Um, the same thing with nature. There is reasons nature needs to be destroyed. Um, underbrush needs to be burned away. Nature is very good at healing itself. That's why, I mean, a lot of forest fires happen in the wilds of nature, never seen by man, because of this very thing. Um, even Native Americans used to do backburns to restore fertility to the land and let it grow wild again. Um, emotions, again, you're tapping into that deep, those deep waters of the emotions. Okay, next, of course, we do have the sigil. The sigil of Leviathan will throw up right here. Now, this is an alchemical symbol known as the Leviathan Cross. Um, it is traditionally was used to represent sulfur. Um, however, a lot of people have started using this as the modern symbol for Leviathan, and that is perfectly okay. This is exactly where I got my started first reaching out with Leviathan. However, 
I also later, once I received the Dragon Eye Seal from the Dragons, utilized that to contact Leviathan. And you can check out our video on the Dragon's Eye Seal here on this channel. I'll make sure it's linked in the cards and above. Um, now this is a great way to utilize a, either the Leviathan's Cross, that is a perfectly usable one, or again you can utilize that Dragon's Eye Seal and use it as a stand-in sigil while calling to Leviathan. Um, when I do this, I actually turn the Dragon's Eye Seal so the element of water is pointing upward while I'm looking at it. And if you are interested, you can check out our merch shop at WorkingDragonMystic.com. Click the Merch tab. We have several um, ways that you can purchase the Dragon's Eye Seal, whether it be on a printed canvas, um, a tapestry to hang on the wall, or it's large enough that you could actually use it as a ritual circle itself and it makes a magnificent ritual circle for the dragon magic practitioners and we even have some shirts on out there as well if you want them okay so this dragon does not have an un that I am aware of if someone does is aware of an un that this dragon or this entity has by all means let me know um, when I'm working with Leviathan I use the standard draconic incantation Draconis Balash Lux Tenebris Draconis Balash Lux Tenebris. Uh, many of you who have taken the Dragon Magic 101 course, um, again, at the online school, you'll be very familiar with this Draconic Incantation. It works very, very well for working with any dragon. But, of course, you can always write your own incantation. Don't think you absolutely have to go out there and find a pre-constructed incantation. The best incantations in a practice, honestly and truly, is either one given to you by the entity directly or one you write yourself. Um, do not waste hours trying to find and figure out how to pronounce someone's incantation that they gave you, even if they claim it was channeled by the entity. You will still get better results in one that you wrote yourself or one that was given directly to you always end of story so don't get too hung up on that okay so my experience with leviathan i have highly enjoyed working with this entity this entity has helped me with massive changes in my life getting things moving um helped me a lot with shadow work actually leviathan is one of the ones that i do enjoy doing shadow work with um has helped me deal a lot with emotional issues through my life um some things that were buried and helped me stir it up deal with it heal it um, was very instrumental in helping heal me um, when I was in the hospital. Has also been really, really wonderful in helping me gain um, knowledge and secrets from lore of history and putting pieces together and trying to find the links in different cultures and mythologies that some people don't believe that there's an overlap or a connection or how they might work together or even how they um, exist separately. Um, he's been amazing in those areas. So I do recommend if you are interested in cultures and histories, this is a good um, entity to reach out and talk to. Okay, so I know that this is a very, very quick rundown. And honestly, it needs to be. Leviathan is such a massive, massive entity in lore and mythology. I would have to do a two-hour video to even attempt to really touch on it. However, what I would do is I'd have... I would Take this information, write it down. Um, you could easy, easily reach out to Leviathan using the Leviathan's cross that we showed. Or you can, again, check out the video on the Dragon's Eye Seal and use that. And speak with Leviathan directly and see what you think about this entity. Um, also, I would encourage you to check out your mythology. Um, and don't just read from one source. Try and find multiple sources. There's a lot of um, debates um, different gnosis and disagreements on this entity and I can't say that they're wrong or right because it does differ from place to place and honestly a lot of the old myths and stuff in the translations things were missed or lost so we do kind of have to take this with a grain of salt as we pursue forward and that is why personal experience and application is going to be your best tool as a magician always um, that personal gnosis cannot be replaced 
So I would encourage you to go around and check out multiple sources of information. Um, whether it be on YouTube or reading literature and lore and books um, and the myths of the different entities you are interested in and uh, specifically Leviathan I mean Leviathan has a rich history um, and it's been an interesting one for me to research and study and then to learn about and actually get a chance to talk with this entity that um, has really fascinated me since childhood and it is true, this may not be one of the entities I consider in my daily life's repertoire, but I, I st it still holds a special place in my heart um, from childhood growing up and my time in the church and even just my time and my transition into, um, well, less religion, just more magic. Um, the entity has always been there and always fascinated me. And it's always just been one of those that serpented its way through everything that I've done and still do. Um, and it's also one of the ones that has helped me build bridges with different beliefs. Honestly, Leviathan is one of the entities that drastically helped me make peace with my old church Christian views and my current views and actually still be able to reach out and um, work with churches and work with Christians and build those bridges and friendships and understandings. So for that I'm extremely grateful for Leviathan. Anyways, <clears throat> I hope you take the time to do some more research on Leviathan and especially reach out and contact Leviathan and get to know this entity. I think you'll really enjoy working with them. And until next time, I'm Drake, and this has been Working Dragon Mystic. See you later. Bye-bye.